Okay, here's a great example of um, one square is a slightly smaller. Um, this is a checkered square here, and I'm sewing it on top of this flowered square. And you'll see that the flowered square is clearly larger than the checkered one is. So I'm just splitting the difference and putting some of the extra fabric up top and some of the extra fabric down below. And um, when I stitch them together, they'll um, it'll end up that the seam will be bigger on the flowered one than on the checkered one. So I'll show you that in one minute. So this is my last row, my bottom row of my pillow. And over here, I now have three rows stitched together. Let's see if you can see that on the camera. Now, the next step is that I'm gonna take the top row and I'm gonna turn it upside down on the middle row and I'm going to stitch together along this way. So I'm gonna stitch much longer now through three, three squares. So it looks like this. This is my top row of fabric. Same thing as we did before though, where the right sides are always together. So I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric and I'm keeping my fingers on the side that I'm gonna stitch on. So I'm gonna stitch along this edge here. So I'm gonna put this in like this and you can see it's longer now. So it's hanging down, tilt my camera so you can see the whole thing. It's hanging down um, off my table and um, as I'm stitching, I'm gonna have to be more careful to make sure that that bottom one is in alignment. And what I mean by that is that these corners that are in the, that uh, are attach them together, I wanna make sure that they match up. So I wanna make sure that all four pieces of fabric right here come together at the same spot so that the lines are, uh, so the corners are nice and straight. And the seams that I've made, I can put them on one side or I could open them up like this. And if you had to iron, you would iron them flat like that. Um, either is okay. So I'm, I think for, because we don't have an iron, we're just gonna do it like this and I'm gonna keep them two together. It'll make the fabric a little bit thicker. On the bottom side, I'm laying them flat as well. I just wanna make sure they're flat, they're not wrinkled. And that the top piece of fabric, ah, this is important. The top piece of fabric, um, is lined up with the bottom piece of fabric so that these are these edges are straight right here. Uh, you wanna make sure that they're exactly on top of each other. And then you start like this, lay this flat. Now, once I start moving my with a foot pedal, I'm, I can stop and adjust the fabric that is down here. So I'll, I'll take a look at that after I get to here. But I'm gonna just sew straight along here for a little bit. Keeping this edge the same as it was before, very careful to keep it. Once I get this here, now I wanna take a minute, I stop, and I'm gonna try and line these up here as well. And this can get a little tricky because it looks like one's a little bit shorter than the other. Um, so I'm gonna do my best, but it may not be perfect, and that's okay. Um, so you can see how the purple one underneath of the pink one here is a little bit uh, longer. And that may be because one of the other pieces of fabric was a little bit longer too. So I'm just gonna keep right on going here. My seams are flat. My edges is still trying to stick out on the edge over here. So I wanna make sure that I can see a little bit of fabric sticking out on this side. And now I'm finished. And I'm gonna do my little backward stitch. There we go. Then I turn my handle to bring the needle up. I lift my presser foot. I pull this out and I trim it off. So I have two thirds of my pillow stitched together here. And ideally these four would match up perfectly, but it's, if it's your first pillow, it may not match up perfectly and that's okay. I'm gonna put this back on my planner over here. I'm gonna take my last squares and I'm gonna line them up there, hold them where I wanna sew so that I don't forget which edge I'm sewing together. And if you ever forget, you can always just put it back on your planner and lay it back out again. And Remember, now I'm gonna make, try and make sure my corners are lined up here, my edges are lined up, my seams are laying flat, and I stitch the last stitches together. I'm gonna just take one second to stop and adjust. All right. You can see I still see a little bit of the edge over here, that's good. Get to the end, I hit rewind. Got a little 
beep, it means it's gonna go backwards. Okay, turn the knob to bring the needle up. Lift the presser foot to pick the foot up. Pull the string out. All right, and here is my final pillow, the front of my pillow. Um, the next step will be to come in here and trim off all these extra little strings that I have hanging. So I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and go all the way around the edge and just trim off the extras because I don't really need those. And they'll, they'll just get confusing and get in the way of sewing the front onto the back. So I would just take a second to trim those off. And then the last step will be sewing the back onto the front. And the back is now gonna be bigger than the front. So you'll notice that because of all those seams, we have a little bit of extra and that's totally okay. Um, what you can do here is just uh, do it like this. You can leave the, how do I say this? Leave the, um, the smaller piece centered inside the other one. And then you're gonna stitch, you're gonna pick one color square that you're not gonna sew. So um, I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna, say as I start in this top left corner, I'm gonna sew down here, I'm gonna sew across here, I'm gonna sew up here, I'm gonna sew over there, and I'm not gonna sew this top little part right here because that's where we'll put the stuffing in later. Remember, we always sew the wrong sides are facing out. So in this example, notice I'm still putting the right side of my pillow facing down, and the wrong side is facing out. Um, that's really, really important right now because I want to hide all of this rough edges of my pillow. Okay, so I'm gonna start sewing. I'm gonna start sewing over this side because it's much easier if all the extra fabric is to the left. If I did start sewing over here, you'll see that all my fabric is crowded in here. So it's much better to start sewing on this side instead. I'm sewing on the sides of the extra fabrics to the left of my needle and um, same thing that I did before, I'm gonna make sure a little bit of my fabric's sticking out here. You'll notice a lot of this mauve fabric is gonna stick out because it's just too big. That's okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna stitch it right down to the end. I'm gonna show you how to do the corner. Now you'll notice that these squares are a little bit different size. So this flowery one here is a little smaller than that uh, polka dotted one was. That's okay, but I'm just gonna adjust it by moving slowly my fabric more to the right so that I still see the fabric sticking out over this edge. I don't want that needle to fall off of my fabric squares. It has to stay going both through the fabric squares and going through the backing. Now when I get down near the edge, I'm gonna stop right there. So there's a little bit of pink left. I'm not going right to the edge of the pink. I'm going a little bit short of the pink, just as much as I want my seam to be. And at that point, I pick up the handle and I turn and then I put the handle back down. Now you'll notice the needle stayed in the fabric the whole time. So I pick up the handle, I turn, and then I put it back down. And what's nice about that is it makes a perfectly square corner. No curvy corners, a nice left hand uh, straight, straight line coming down this way and then a straight line coming down this way. All right, so now I'm gonna keep going here. And remember that you want to make sure you tuck these uh, edges, these um, seams, flat. That, that when the sewing machine sews over them, they're sewing them over them flat. They're not sticking up. And I should have trimmed these off. I get close to the edge, but I don't go all the way to the corner. Pick up the handle. I turn the fabric. I put the handle back down. Now you'll notice that my foot is too too far over, too close to the edge. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm slowly gonna adjust by um, moving my fabric slightly so that my fabric gets back to where it should be and lines up with the edge of this foot over here. And oh, and look here. If something like this happens, I stop and I fix it. I want this to be perfectly flat. I want always my stitch to be, my two pieces of fabric to be perfectly flat, no wrinkles. If you had a really wrinkled piece of fabric, you'd actually wanna iron it before you started sewing it because wrinkles will ruin a pattern, will ruin a project. You have to get all the wrinkles out. Now, I've stitched down here, I've stitched over here, I've stitched up here, I'm gonna stitch across here, but I can't close it. I have to leave a little pocket open so that I can turn it the other side out and I stuff it with stuffing. So here we go. 
Um, we're gonna go here. I'm gonna remember to stop when we get to the checkerboard one. Super important. It's really easy to forget. And I wanna make sure that you stop when you get right to the end of this uh, square right here. So I'm gonna just keep going till I get to the end of that flower square and leave a little pocket here of the checkerboard square. I'm gonna put re rewind and just put two or three stitches in there and then go forward and I'm gonna stop right here. I turn the handle, picks it up to the top. I'm gonna open the presser foot, pull this out, and I am finished with my sewing. The next step is to put my uh, fingers in this little hole that I've left at the checkerboard square, and I'm gonna start pushing it through with my thumbs in order to get all the fabric right side out. And it all has to fit through that little hole that I've left. So that's why I wanted you to leave a square worth a hole so that you've got room to get all that fabric in there. And you're gonna pull it out like this to get your pillow right side out. And this is my completed pillow. And I push the corners out so I've got nice square corners. You can see how that one's not square yet, but this one is. So I'm gonna go back into my opening here. I'm gonna find my opening, here it is. And I'm gonna work my way all the way over to that corner, use my fingers to poke it through. And that is my completed pillow. The next step is to put some stuffing in here. And so you'll get uh, cotton fiber fill and you'll fill that up as fat as you want it to be or as little as you want it to be. It's your choice of what it, how, stuffing, how stuffed it is. And then you'll bend these uh, edges in so that you've got a nice straight edge here. And you can do one of two things. The, um, the uh, detailed way to do this is to get a piece of thread and needle and hand stitch closed that little opening. But if you don't know how to hand stitch with a thread and needle, that's okay. That's not part of this lesson because what you alternately could do is uh, put this right back under here and just stitch very closely to the edge right along there. And you'll have one little part of your pillow that has pink stitching on top, but the rest of it is hidden underneath. Or what uh, yours won't be pink, it'll be whatever color you chose. So there's your first finished pillow project. Congratulations.